Hi there and welcome to another video. In this video I'm going to talk about two things that are really important for you to understand because later on you will need to have them so you can have your own website. The first one is what is a domain name? Why do you need one? And the second thing that I'm going to talk about in this video is what is a web host provider? But for you to understand this first we need to talk about something else. What is an IP address? You probably have heard about this but what exactly is this? Well, IP stands for Internet Protocol. The fact is, every single computer that is connected to the Internet, and this can be a laptop, it can be a cell phone, it can be a static computer, or even a printer, has a unique IP address. And this is the way that the computers that are connected to the Internet can actually identify each other. And over here you can see an example of an IP address for this laptop which is 173.194.45.5 so this is an example of an IP in this case for this laptop and this other laptop has another IP address when one computer wants to connect with another it needs to know its IP address so it can actually connect to that computer and get the information or the files that it wants it's, it's like, let's say that you want to telephone someone. What do you need? You need that person's phone number, so you can actually call that person. Well, it's pretty much the same thing with computers. Let's say that one computer wants to call another, so it can actually get information from that other computer. Instead of needing a phone number, it needs an IP address. So that's exactly why IP addresses exist. Anyway, fortunately, we have something called domain names and this is something that you certainly have saw a lot of times before. Domain names are for example google.com, wikipedia.org, prosaitorials.com, youtube.com, those are just a few examples. But the reason why domain names exist it's because it's way easier for us to actually remember names instead of numbers. Because just imagine for a second that you wanted to go to Google and domain names just didn't exist. And instead, you actually needed to insert this huge number into your browser so you could actually go to Google's web server and see their website. And then later on, you wanted to go to ProSiteTurial, so you would need another IP address. I mean, it's really hard for you to actually remember numbers and it's far easier for you to actually remember names. So that's the reason why domain names actually exist. Also, domain name has a structure. Over here in this example, you can see prosaitorials.com. The .com is what we call a top-level domain name. And you can also call it an extension. The most common extension on the internet is certainly the .com. It's the most popular one and it's commonly used by commercial websites. You also have the .org, which is commonly used by nonprofit organizations. Also have the .net and .info, which are others. And then you have extensions that are used for websites that reside in a particular country, such as .co.uk for a website that resides in the United Kingdom. You also have the .ca for a website that resides in Canada and you have other ones. Well, this last extensions are great if you actually want to do a website and most of your business is mostly inside of your country. You can get this kind of extension for your country and it's quite helpful for you to actually rank better on the search engines for your country if you actually use one of these extensions. And the name that most people actually remember, for example, ProSaitorials, is what we call second level domain name. And other names are, for example, Google, Yahoo, Facebook, Twitter. These are the names that people usually remember. And later on, when you start building your website, this is one of the first things that you actually need to choose, is a second level domain name. And I will give you a few tips so you can select a name that looks good it's really important because 
it's really by the name of your website that many times people remember the kind of content that you have over there, the product that you have, and so on. So it's really important for you to get a good name for your website. And once you put everything together, you get what we call a domain name. For example, google.com is a domain name, yahoo.com is another, facebook.com, and twitter.com is all the main names. Also, as I said previously, when one computer connects to another, it needs its IP address. So when you go to your browser and, for example, you write prosectorials.com, computers really don't understand that. For them, that's nothing. They need the IP address so they can actually connect to the web server where my website is actually installed and they need to connect that to, to that server so they can actually upload the files and see the website on their browser. So for this they need an IP address and for this there exists something called DNS which stands for Domain Name System. This is a system that actually translates the domain name that you insert into your browser to its specific IP address so you can actually connect to the web servers that you need so you can view the website. Also another thing that you actually need when you start a website is a web host service or you can also call it a web host provider. And basically this is the home for your website, it is where your website will be installed, the files of your website, the images, everything will be stored in this servers that usually is provided by a company. So this is a company that provides some space in their servers so you can store the files of your website. And at the same time this company puts your website on the internet so other people can view it and that's exactly what you want. In this image you can see a room full of servers and later on you will have your website installed in a server like this the one that you can actually see over here. Over here you have an example of how a server looks like. And actually when you go to one of these companies you usually have two different services. You have the shared web host and you have the dedicated web host. When you are starting out you just have a small uh, website. Many times the, the best option is really going for a shared web host. This is basically a server that can actually have 100 or more websites just in one server. Usually the, it's less expensive, it's far more cheaper, but at the same time you don't have the same connection to your website. By this I mean your uploading time for your website pages is slower and so on. But if you are just starting out, this is pretty much all that you need. And later on, if you want, you can actually get a dedicated web host. This is a server just for your website. And this is great when you have a really big website, you have a lot of traffic entering, and you can actually invest in a dedicated web host. Okay, so let's put everything together. Over here you can see just a basic idea of how the internet works, because the internet is far more complex than this. And actually, if you want more details about this, just go to the resource page from this course and over there you can watch other videos that offer more details about the internet. Okay, let's imagine that this girl, I'm going to call her Jamie, she wants to go to prosectorials.com. So, she writes on her browser prosectorials.com. Now, what exactly happens? Many times we really don't think about this because everything happened so fast we just put a domain name and a few seconds later we have a website just in front of us. But what exactly happens? Well, so she writes the domain name and then she is connected to a DNS server. DNS servers, these are not just one server, these are many servers that actually are spread around the world. And basically this is a database that will try to find exactly the IP for prosectorials.com. So once it finds the IP for prosectorials.com, it actually returns that IP back to Jamie's uh, laptop. 
when she has the, the IP, she can directly connect to the web host that has my website installed. So she can actually watch and see my website on her browser. So that's exactly just a basic idea of how the internet works. And what did you actually learn in this video? You learn that you need a domain name for your website. This is basically the address for your website. And it's important for you to choose a good name for your website because it's something that people will actually remember. And many times they relate the name of your website to the content that you have and also to the kind of product that you are promoting. The second thing that you learn is about DNS. DNS is something that actually translates the domain name that you insert into your browser to its respective IP address because that's the only way that computers can actually connect with each other. Also, you learn that you need a web host provider. This is a company that will store all the information of your website and at the same time put it over the internet so other people can actually view it. So that is all for this video and if you have any question related to this video, just leave it below on the comment section. I will try to reply as fast as possible. I hope you enjoyed this video and stay tuned with ProSite Tutorials and bye!